Hello, this is Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu show. I'm so、mm-hmm. happy today because I have David Hofmeister here again. Hi, David.、Mm, hi, Francis. It's great to be back. <laughs> yeah, and what a topic today! You know, even before the show, I was trying to get everything in order, and our internet was kind of unstable in the last few days. So I was thinking, well, I could use hotspot, but truly, the most relaxing thought was that I. I will give it all over to be taken care of by Jesus, by the Spirit, and truly, all outcome is equally acceptable. And I'll let Jesus take care of me, take care of everything, and that is really the most relaxing thought I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so.、Uh... Different from the the ways of the world and the conditioning of the world, but we were talking yesterday about this world being part of a prearranged plan. And if you knew it was all like prearranged or packaged or already in the can, like a movie, old time movie, when you go to the theater, you're not really concerned whether the movie will be complete or whether the movie will finish, or that's just assumed. Uh, that you you just watch, <laughs> and I think if we could treat our experience the same way, just watch,、yeah. uh, then that would be very relaxing because you would all outcomes would be equally acceptable, like、yeah. they are in a in a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even growing up in China, one thing that I was Um, taught, and also is very、um, deep rooted in the culture, is this、um, wisdom, particularly、um, that you can't. If it is destined for you to have, you can't even avoid it. If it is not destined for you to have, there is no use to try. And I grew up with that, and yet, you know, sometimes I would say that to each other, to friends, and and yet. In this very competitive environment, in the school, it, it, there was a huge gap in terms of the wisdom that we share, and yet the, the practical applications.、Mm-hmm. Um, the practical application was anything but that. We <laughs> strive for being better, trying to make things happen, and feeling responsible、um, to make things happen. So now coming to the deep practical、um, practicality of the teachings of the course, and even this topic, let all things be exactly as they are, is actually one of the workbook lessons.、Um, it is a thought from the spirit, and I'm really curious to know, David, because when you know when I got into The practice of a course in miracles, and especially living here with you in the community,、um, truly stopped the the pursuit of、uh, what I had been pursuing in the world. I actually realized that you know the the pursuit wasn't because the peer pressure wasn't because I was taught to do that、It、wasn't because. The world taught me so. There was a deeper reason because I started to see that even when I stopped pursuing jobs and different things, there was an inner drive. It's almost like I taught the world <laughs> instead、mm. of the other way around.、Mm. I still carry this inner drive in,、um, yeah, wanting an outcome, wanting certain outcome. And yet, and an, 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 analyzing the motive and how to 
really see the root could only take me so far. I couldn't really see what is the deeper drive there. So, yeah, I just, I just want to hear about your experience with it all. Yeah, well, I think that that drive, everybody kind of is aware of it, and and I could recognize it when I read in the course that Jesus said, everyone who comes to this world is seeking, and seek you must. So basically, that's the drive, I think, is there's there's a search going on, and there's a seeking going on. And, of course, the Bible is famous for Jesus saying, seek and ye shall find, and knock and the door shall be opened. And then in the Course, Jesus says that the ego, its, uh, its basic uh, premise is seek and do not find. So I think, I did see on A Course in Miracles um, Facebook group uh, several days ago, somebody said, who is it that learns? Mm. And somebody answered and said, well, it's the ego. And and if we acknowledge that spirit is beyond learning, uh, that it just is, and then we look at the whole idea of having a learning goal or seeking after something or seeking to for self-improvement or anything, that I think we can see that that it is the ego that learns and the and the ultimate of of the the goal of the course of forgiveness would be to to learn that everything that one has learned has no meaning. Uh, that would be the goal of learning, and that would be another way of saying that is to learn to be present. So that's so different because learning is associated with linear time. It's associated with future goals. It's associated with accumulative learning or progressive learning or building block learning. And uh, that's why I think Jesus says in the Course, you may have noticed that the goal of this Course is completely different from the goal of the world. Mm -hmm. Because the goal of the world and all the goals of the world are egoic. So learning to be present must mean that we would have to then, if that's really what Jesus is telling us is important, then we would have to reorient our entire definition of success to learning to be present. And then that would take it away from all the typical pursuits, a successful uh, lawyer or a successful businessman or successful teacher or student or mother or father or anything, you know, we would have to start to realize that that's not the right direction. That whatever we've tried to learn in terms of achieve, accumulate, build, you know, progressive building block learning, that that's actually the wrong direction if, if we need to learn to be present. Then we have to acknowledge that. Yeah. I actually remember this morning one of the um, YouTube videos I, I watched uh, was about this guy's mystical experience. And um, so he, you know, I think the, the one mystical experience he had was he was listening to a blind kid playing piano and it was so touching. And he just said in his heart, thank you God for this experience. And that, that night, he had this uncontrollable love and light um, that showered him for, for a whole night. That was his first encounter hmm. with God. And then the, the, the second one was he was a pilot, and then uh, there was an accident with, when he was flying one day. The plane actually, um, they, they were trying to land on the runway, but... The plane lost control completely, so swayed to the to the gravel part of the runway. Runway, and then he he just said that he was suddenly he saw everything in slow motion, and absolutely everything. There was a coke can that got um, like you know uh, pushed onto the 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 windshield and everything. But he said he saw every drop of the coke spill out of the can mm -hmm. and every little dust and everything was exactly where it belonged. There was nothing 
that have gone wrong were, could ever go wrong. It was like this profound glimpse that everything is exactly how it should. And I just, when I thought of that this morning, I also remember last time when you were here on the show, you actually mentioned in, in the hermitage time that you had in the woods, um, you actually had that experience as well. Wow, absolutely everything is exactly how it should be. There is n- nothing wrong. Nobody is ever wrong or could ever you know, be wrong. So, and yeah, that is such a a different experience than the everyday experience that we have. So, and sometimes I was, you know, over the years, I was watching you in the everyday decisions that we have on a daily basis. Um, for example, you were doing some movie gatherings, and at one point, Diana was really inspired to put some quantum movies together into a book. And then an editor came in to want to really do a very thorough editing of the the nuances, and and it, it's going to be a very long process. And you said no, no need because. Because you did it, the gathering, out of joy, and Diana put it together out of joy, and that was enough. Nothing mm-hmm. else was needed to add on to that. And I was watching those kind of decisions and thinking, wow, you really don't care about any outcome. It was all in the moment. And when a moment passed, is the next moment. There was mm-hmm. nothing to look back on. There was nothing to improve on. It was just show up and let go, show up and let go. So, yeah, it's just very inspiring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is different. I mean, I think I remember even when they talked about sending a, a spacecraft um, to the moon, that, that basically they just all these course corrections. They have to keep course correcting, course correcting. And I think that's the way a lot of people feel with everything, that if they do a drawing, they have to polish it and polish it and polish it. If they do a writing, they have to polish it, polish it, polish it. If, uh, you know, it's this editing urge to, to edit. And Ken Wapnick told the story that one time he uh, stopped in to visit Helen Chuckman, and she was at her desk at her office, and and um, she was on a call. So um, he waited and waited and waited, and finally he just thought, oh, I, I really, she's still on the call. So he scribbled a little note for her on a piece of paper uh, to let her know that he he would get in touch with her later and so on and so forth. And she instinctively just, while she continued talking, pulled the paper over, pulled out a pen and started editing Ken's note to her. (laughs) And that is a good extreme example of how the mind works when it's always into self-improvement because it it all, it doubts that it's perfect. It, It doubts that it, it feels that it's lacking. So it doubts itself and doubts everything, including all the things that are around it. So it's always trying to do course corrections or make adjustments as if that's just natural, when actually it's not natural at all. All, Let all things be exactly as they are, we could say, is a natural idea. Mm. It is truly very relaxing Mm -hmm. Yeah. to think that. Yeah. Yeah. And there is really... um, no personal, um, how to put it, like nothing is because of a personal effort. I don't know whether you, mm. ha- you have that kind of experience. It's really not because of me, of anything. This, there is such a huge plan that's going on. Because I, you know, um, the day before last, last night, the night before last night, I actually watched this, documentary movie that Laverne just recently recommended to me called General Magic. And it was um, 
a company、um, that was called General Magic, but nobody is aware of them right now. But the 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 founder of the company is actually a kind of a branch of Apple. So right after Apple launched. The first Macintosh, which was a huge groundbreaking thing at the time, in the 80s, the, the first Macintosh computer, personal computer, was launched, and then、um, this team inside Apple worked with Steve Jobs together. One guy had this vision that it is about communication; it's not just about computing and word processing. It's going to be about com- communication. And the next thing would be to break the barrier of communication. So he had this huge vision that the next thing would be something you put in a pocket, touch screen, and it will you know, enable people talk, you know, face to face and send messages to each other. And yet, the vision came before internet. So this group of people. Just started to launch into this project. They were so enthusiastic; they were burning with their passion, you know. And they just got into it. And Steve Jobs、um, got fired from Apple at the same time. They were really shocked, but they they kept on going. And four years later, finally, this thing came out. Still, right just before the internet, and there was no market. Nobody needed, and they were too early, and they they had this huge failure, just like a total failure because they were so passionate about this vision, and yet it just failed in the worldly sense. And many many seventeen years later, iPhone came out. So and then when they sat there and they said, you know, if we knew at the time, it would be Steve who. Brought it forward, we wouldn't be this upset because if anybody, Steve would do it right. And and yet, I was looking at it how it was all caught on film. How they felt so devastated that it was not right. The revision was wrong, or it wasn't supposed to be. And yet, seventeen years later, Steve. Consulted them for putting the the iPhone together, and and this young group that used to just be passionate. At the end of the film, they gave them the titles on their name. They're the head of Google, head of eBay, head of LinkedIn, head of Pinterest.、Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable. Even you know, in this world, you can't really even judge what what is supposed to be. And I was. What I liked about the, the whole thing at the end was that you can't make anything happen personally, no matter how so-called developed you know the skills are developed or how good you are. Nothing could make anything happen, and there is a much much bigger plan that nobody can see. And yet, in the end, after twenty years, they they could all sit there and laugh and say everything. Work together. Everything is so perfect, you know, and it's not a personal effort、mm-hmm. or anything. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. It's an interesting story too, because it kind of brings us back to that idea of what true success is. If if we define success as as being present, if that's all that the ego can learn, is ultimately that nothing. That it is believed about time and space is true, and it doesn't know anything. Then that's the highest、uh, learning it could have, almost like coming back to zero. But if you look at it in terms of that story, you could say that that there seem to be many collaborations. That was like a collaboration within Apple, like a little offshoot. But it still involved reciprocity. It still involved competition.、Mm-hmm. It still involved、uh, sales.、Um, it, it involved invention. And in the end, you have to conclude that all those things are of linear time, and all of those things don't mean anything. In that, if the project was aimed at finding 
true communication or removing all the obstacles to communication, that could only happen in the present moment. Mm. And it could only happen from spirit. So it would mean that all those attempts were ego collaborations, meaning collaborations in time and space, and therefore the failure is inevitable. Mm -hmm. I would say failure goes, it's an ultimate sense of failure or success, gain or loss, uh, but also it's based on false definitions because it's based on linear time. So if it was a great project and you could say the, ultimately they wanted to break the, the barriers of communication, that's a high calling. And then we learn from Jesus that you can only do that in the holy instant. Hmm. Because he does say that in the text. That would you want total communication with everyone and everything without exception? This is what the holy instant offers you. Hmm. So he's, he's actually teaching the holy instant, uh, but it, it seems to be 31 chapters and a whole workbook for students of 365 lessons and a manual for teachers. And the, even in the text he says, you, you cannot prepare for the holy instant without placing it into the future. So then even preparation is a defense against the truth. And that really takes it deep because that is taking us towards this that this moment is all that there is that that there is no need for preparation for it but there is a need for acceptance mm -hmm. of it complete acceptance you know unequivocal acceptance so that's why when people talk about the spiritual journey so to speak there's so many linear concepts in there if you think about the east and um Reincarnation, you know, mm -hmm. and that has very much a time, time space component to it. And most concepts, uh, even the concept of return to God is, Jesus says, is, is absolutely unnecessary because the ego sponsors the, and likes the idea of return because <laughs> it is has an assumption underneath it that, that there's been a, a fall from grace or a separation. And Jesus is saying that's not even true. Mm. So in the end, I think it's just you, you give your mind permission to accept all things as they are. And it takes away the, the challenge, the struggles, the striving, the efforting. You know, that's really the last lesson of the Holy Spirit. You, you know, the first two are involve time and involve the belief in opposites. But the last one, the third lesson, is where there's a realization that having and being are the same. So that is the present moment as well. That's the ultimate realization. The others were just the, the window dressing, the preliminaries, you know, to, to have, give all to all, and have peace, teach peace, to learn it. But you know, ultimately, it comes down into like a, just a, a desire for peace, and then the present moment is the only thing that can deliver that. Hmm. We find there is nothing of, of the past or future that, that can deliver present peace. Hmm. Only the present can, can deliver or be the, hmm. the present peace. So it's very profound, you know, talk about simplicity, this is like <laughs> peeling away the layers, because we can get excited about even, you know, collaborations in time and space, and mm. in the end, those always turn into heartbreak stories, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, the whole movie on him getting fired from the company that he founded, mm. the world would say that's a tragedy, mm. like a Shakespearean modern day mm. tragedy. Uh, the the idea, too, of Steve Jobs passing or uh, this group saying, well, if mm. we, if we j have known that Steve would carry it through, then we wouldn't have been so devastated. It's still, time is full of devastation. Mm. And we have to admit that, that that's because God didn't create it. <laughs> and, and what God doesn't create doesn't exist. So that's coming more and more to that, oh, 
the devastation is a misperception of time. Mm -hmm. It's it's simultaneous. It's not linear and never has been linear and yet that's the one thing that's accepted mm. uh, with the human race is is time. Mm. That seems to be at the bottom of it all. That's like the floor on which <laughs> the human race is built. That's the foundation mm. on which the whole construct of the human race uh, is is built. Yeah, when when the perception involves or when there is emotional roller coaster throughout our life it, you know, there is still like this drive, like you said, there is a searching and the desire to change something. And if let all things be exactly what they are, then the only thing that needs to change is within. There is a change that is called for, I would say, is actually a change of perception. Yeah, in acceptance. I mean, it's acceptance. It's, a, it's acceptance of this purpose, mm. you know, of forgiveness, which is what the atonement is. So that's why Jesus says, "Accept the atonement," you know, mm. or now make the atonement. Yeah, he doesn't say make it or generate the atonement. Uh, decide for God, you know, accept the atonement. So it's already there. Again, it, it, the present moment is already there, yeah. and yet it's fully going into that. And and in one sense, it's kind of like at the end of the, the Truman Show, where he takes a bow and says, "In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night." It's like a a gracious bow, like in the Orient, where they have a a, a bow of of respect and a bow of honoring. That's kind of a bow of to the spirit, like uh, I accept you exactly as you are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think when when we see exactly what it is, there is no drive to change the ego. We see it, it as what it is. It's mm. not a threat, really. It's not anything if we don't um, bite on to it, or we don't allow ourselves to be in alignment. And I feel, you know, it's, it's not possible to really understand the extent of it, or the application of it until until I was in the miracle and be shown a contrast. And in that contrast, I understood a little bit. And in that contrast, I understood a little bit. So even, even that, to let go of the, the attempt to really understand anything and trying to, yeah, just trying to leap forward that really um, bring the mind back to rest. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think understanding would have to be in the present. So, yeah, you, you cease to try to understand anything of the world or time. And when we talked about the ego, you could say the ego is synonymous with time. And once you just see it as it is, then it, it's neutralized. And what does that mean? It means that, like Jesus says, uh, the time is in the hands of the miracle worker. So Jesus is saying that the miracle worker has, has time at its disposal. So there's, there's, it's not a concrete thing anymore. It's, it's simply something that can be used in a way that brings a blessing, mm -hmm. because you're not limited to time or to the laws of time, but you are freed of time in the miracle. And then he says perception can be rearranged, which is another idea that to humans it's like, what, what does that mean? Perception can be rearranged, but he's basically 
saying that, that what seems to be a, a, a linear progression is not what it seems. And that ultimately, uh, even when we say the script is written, it's just, it's just coming to, to see it for what it is. It's just equally over and gone. Mm. And, and that's what the, the present shows. It's a clean, crisp, clear instant that's free of the past entirely. Mm. Uh, it's like Jesus says in the workbook lesson recently, time goes by without its touch upon us. Um, that's, a, that's a freeing feeling, almost like a child who's playing, you know, in the sand or playing in the creek and is unaware of the passage of time, just glee and joy. It's, it's very much, that's, that's a reminder of, of how simple life is meant to be. And yet, when that child seems to grow over, there's all this education and all this pursuit. Make something of yourself, you know, be something, become something, um, fulfill your destiny in form, and on and on. You know, in the end, we start to realize that's a trick, mm. too. That, you know, a little child shall lead them. A, a child, Jesus says... When he says in the Bible, except you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He, he tells us what he means in the Course. He says, unless you can have complete dependence on God as an infant has complete dependence on, on parents, then you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. So we're back to the holy instant again. That's where you have complete dependence on God is in the holy instant. Mm. And then time itself is, is a trick to try to divert the mind into to be something that it's not. So that's why the present moment is the gateway to eternity, because the holy instant is, is everything. Mm. And that's really what we're, we're to teach, is teach presence from this, this instant, just to radiate presence from this instant, and that's it. <laughs> Even Eckhart now seems Eckhart Tolle has a, like a whole career seemingly, but it's all based on the power of now and, and being present. Mm. And it's kind of funny because it's, you know, to the world it's like he seems that, like they say, well, that's no career, you know, but actually that becomes everything. Uh, presence becomes everything. Yeah, and that is our only function here isn't it? Yeah. To actually, it's a very different function. I think even when we talk about the, the term function, it's very tempting for the mind to grasp onto form. What What is my function for this period of time, for now? What should yeah. I do? Mm -hmm. What What should I do? And, and yet the function is to, like you said, be so present and radiate the light that shines through this present moment which actually is saying to, to anchor the mind with the spirit. That's really, that's all. Yeah. And it's not a doing. Yeah, it's not a doing. It's interesting when Jesus uses the term special function, because I think that means that it's the appearance of how it seems to look when you're present. Uh, it's all it is. It's, it's not a, a specific form, it's just how the world seems to look. And when you were just talking, it was reminding me of the workbook lesson, my happiness and my function are one. So mm. he is definitely associating function with happiness. Mm. And he doesn't really focus on the function as a specific form, mm. even though at the beginning he says in the workbook, we have to work with specifics because, you know, Ego made specifics, and now we must work with specifics in your mind training to, to bring you back. But back to what? Back to the light, back to the formless, back to the present moment, back to the holy instant. And so that that's still the focus. Mm. It's always the focus. Mm -hmm. And we've done, I think we've done at least two online retreats called Undoing the Doer. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of those repeat things, like in the course workbook, you know, I am as God created me is repeated mm. time and time again. But Undoing the Doer 
has been important for us because there's glee, there's joy in that. There's there's heaviness with the idea that you have a have to do something or have done something or need to do something. You know, there's heaviness with all of that, but but if you undo the doer, then you just let go of the identification with the body. And that is freedom indeed. That's what the holy instance all about. Yeah, with the doer also there was there is an assumption that I can decide on my actions. And in that it was this total block that I I can decide on my mind. And that is a power that that is not really emphasized in this world. You can decide the kind of thoughts that you think in this moment. And yet all that we are um brought up with is you can decide the kind of behaviors. Be a good person, be a responsible person, you know? And that's what really what I I see the 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 stress underneath that decision is is that you actually can decide on that level. And we think we can, and then everything is always out of control. Even the body mm -hmm. is always out of control. And then all this mind energy is directed or channeled in trying to impose order in a orderless um, place. Yeah, try to impose order and chaos. Jesus talks about that in the text where he says, you, you believe you can order your own thoughts. And he comes around and says that that's not true. God orders your thoughts. But God orders your thoughts. He's talking about real thoughts. He's mm -hmm. talking about heaven. He's mm -hmm. talking about creation. He's talking about light. He's not talking about the thoughts, private thoughts of this world. Mm -hmm. What business would God, who wants everything openly revealed, mm -hmm. what business would God have of ordering private thoughts? There's, there's no incentive. God doesn't even know about private thoughts. So how could God order the private thoughts? But that's the belief you can order your own thoughts is... Yeah. What private thoughts, private minds about. And then that's where, again, it's a surrender or a merge with the holy instant is just the recognition that I, I have not known anything. I have not thought anything related to time and space that's original. There's not one original thought with time and space, even though everyone's saying, oh, a new invention, a new medicine, you know, a, a a new thing happening, a new fad. No, yeah. no, it's nothing's new under the sun, the Bible says. Yeah. And it's talking S-U-N. <laughs> so it's talking time and space. And you could say there's nothing new under the S-O-N, sun, because the sun is everything. The Christ is everything. And the Christ is ever new. It's forever new. It's just, it's an eternal creation. So there's nothing new under the sun. So that means what Jesus says is resign now as your own teacher. You know, if you believe you're a human being, a personality, a body, and that you can direct the thoughts of what you want to think and what you want to think about, that is the authority problem. That's mm. still trying to manage chaos uh, and come up with a different configuration. That You might say that's what reincarnation is, it's just the belief mm. that you can invent and reinvent yourself over and over and over and over, on and on and on throughout time. And Jesus does say that you come to this world without a self and you make one as you go along. That's what he means. You, you try to make up a self by believing you can order your own thoughts and by believing you can decide about these thoughts. Um, you can arrange them. And that's judgment. That's that's basically what judgment is, mm -hmm. is the attempt to take chaos or hell and arrange hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rearrange the deck chairs of the Titanic mm -hmm. when the ship is sinking. In fact, Jesus would say it never floated mm -hmm. in the first place. It, it can't really sink because it, it never could, could float. It's, it was a big steel hunk of metal that, uh, you know, most people would say that's just humans, you know, trying to sail across the sea. So coming up with a bigger, more complicated hunk of metal, and then it hits an iceberg and disappears and everyone goes, tragedy. Well, 
tragedy is private thoughts and believing you can arrange chaos. That's the tragedy, mm -hmm. not in reality, because in heaven, you know, there is none of this, but we're really getting down to the impossibility of judgment is really what we're talking about. And you, you can change your mind, though. You can change your mind to choose a different set of thoughts, but you, you don't have the choice within. Like, that's what you're yeah. saying. You can choose to, to have the spirit thoughts come to mind or the egos, and yet within the egos, if you have chosen the ego and then trying to arrange the thoughts within that realm, it's, it's impossible. It's all chaos. Yeah, that the Jesus says change was the greatest gift with which God blessed His Son. So what's He talking about? Because Christ was created changeless, but He's saying when you're when you're sleeping, then you can still change your mind about your mind. And then He goes on to say what that means. That means you can accept your changelessness. Mm -hmm. So if you believe you're a time creature, you can accept your changelessness, your Christ nature. That's it. Mm. That's the only option that's available, and that's the atonement. That's that's what the atonement is. That's the correction. Accept, <laughs> accept your changelessness. Another way you could say is accept the holy instant. You know, that's, or, or as Eckhart says, be present. You know, that's another way of saying the mm. same thing. Mm -hmm. But, but present, of course, is, is so still that it goes, it just is pure light. It's not, not like when people say, be present with your breathing, be present with your surroundings. Eckhart will use that as an initial kind of meditation to kind of help start to still the mind. But then when you're fully present, then, then that's revelatory. Then the world disappears <laughs> in that. It's happened to me a few times, so I know. <laughs> So you're basically saying there's no real choice. Yeah, not choice in the world. There's not a choice in the world. So it's, you know, it's a tricky proposition for course students because the, the course says seek not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world, but the temptation is to change the world. Mm -hmm. and. And you have to just come to a realization that that's not really possible. And if you come to that realization, you do realize that politics are impossible, that self-improvement is impossible, that uh, human development is impossible, that human progress is impossible. You can just go through the whole gamut of things that Newtonian science, which is the predominant science belief of the world, it's impossible. And you know, you go on and on. So therefore, you are a state of mind that's happy, that's joyful, but you have no intent on arguing, debating, mm -hmm. trying to fix or sway somebody. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to sway somebody to think or believe a certain way. You simply have to be it. And by being it, you're a demonstration of it. And that's it. That's all. That's all that there is. There's there's nothing more <laughs> that you could ever be than a demonstration of what you already are. Mm. And yesterday in in uh, another event, you mentioned this um, time when Jesus actually asked you to delete your resume, and I also just know that you know it. You know, to 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 delete a resume, and then to truly not want to be sustained by yourself, by the world, and then truly to let go of all outcome. This is a, a extremely um, I can't even say it's, it's not an action. It's not just a simple action of deleting mm. something in form. And it takes such a total change of mind to be able to live from that place that there is no outcome that is desired from the world. Yeah, how 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 did that change happen? Well, I think it's it is a convincing and it's it's like being convinced that you can truly relax 
and why you can truly relax is that you're not in control of anything in form. So once you come to the realization you're not in control in form, and we were talking about that today with whether if the internet was wobbly or would go down or this could happen or that, and then finally I just trust that it's out of my hands. That, And that's really the realization that nothing in form or nothing is ti in time is, is in my control. The miracle puts me in a position where I can just feel the relaxation of that and then behold any appearance. It doesn't matter what the appearance is. So there's no concern about some appearances being better or worse because there there isn't such a thing. You know, there's no order of difficulty of miracles because there's no hierarchy of illusions. There, every appearance is the same. But I think that that had to be kind of accepted for me, like as I was practicing the course and going out on the road and meeting new people every day and going to new places every day and very different from anything I'd ever known. It was it was an invitation into an experience. And the best part was that it all worked out wonderfully. You mm -hmm. know, it, it just it worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. If if uh if I felt after the second night out or something that it was a total failure, like the those group that that uh, tried to break away from the barriers of communication and then there was no market for it. Uh, you, you don't have this problem in terms of looking for a market, but you do have in terms of your own experience. Mm. If you're joyful and you're happy and you feel safe mm. and taken care of and cared for, that is the experience that convinces you of the miracle. If, if you felt destitute and mm. alone and abandoned, you know, that, that would be just trying to emulate a form, thinking that you could change the form or something and emulate some mystic or saint and just emulate their behavior and then find the same state of mind. It doesn't work that way. You have to be convinced in mind mm. and then the form doesn't matter. <laughs> mm. And that was such a orchestrated curriculum to have you being on this travel for five years and not knowing every day how, where to sleep. And I, I remember the first time when I heard about this was 2010. I think you just spoke at a conference in England. And I was just about to take the step to truly let go of career and business and even like a stash of money in a bank account, thinking that would last me for this this many years. And just to truly let it go, when I heard that, I feel so happy, that so happy, it was so profound for me that someone could testify that, yes, you can be taken care of by God. Yes, and I have done this. And I'm completely convinced Really, for me, I just needed one <laughs> one example to be able to have that courage to say, "Okay, then I'm in, and then we shall see." Yeah, yeah, that's it. In this, those five years, it was not only travel, but there was a couple different um, community experiences in the five years too, which is new for me because I hadn't really, I mean I'd read about spiritual communities, I kind of had a fascination and but not actually going and being part of something like that. So it was five years of, of travel, trust, not knowing what was coming next and two very uh, kind of new experiences because uh, if somebody had asked me, you know, when I was in my teens or my twenties, um, would you ever live in a spiritual community? I would say, what is that? Mm. I I wouldn't even, I don't even have a an idea, a box, in my mind. I grew up in a Christian family, a Protestant family, and you know, Midwest, and it wasn't like I was in India or 
California, you know, during Berkeley, all these open-minded ideas or, you know, clothing optional, you know, <laughs> things. There was, you know, I grew up in a very conservative area with a very conservative kind of mindset. And so if somebody said, what what do you think? Do you think you ever live in a spiritual community? I would just say, what what's that? Mm. So when it came to me during those five years of travel, there was a couple of them, then that that really showed me a number of things. Like I could see it was this thing in the manual for teachers about teachers and students coming together when the timing is right. And I went, oh, that must be what this is. I read about that in the manual for teachers. So I had <laughs> a basis of studying the course. So I, I had a little bit of an idea. And then it's very different, though, when when you live with a group of people. You know, it was an out of pattern experience for me. I had nothing in my past to to prepare me for anything like that. I could watch movies of the '60s and you know people having uh, you know coming together in these encounter groups and and different communities and everything, but. And so I had read up a little bit, but I hadn't actually experienced it. So that was part of those five years, too. It was Jesus really packed in a lot mm. into those uh, five years between 1991 and 1996. Wow. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. When I first came to the community, it was just so different in terms of the way that I communicate suddenly the communication was, there was so much communication. And, um, yeah, I, had, I also had to face, because in, in the world, in the past, when I, um, you know, work in a corporate job or even being in school, I had this sense of always tiptoeing around life in different ways, just mm -hmm. wanting to be approved of, wanting to be this. And, in the community, I first time I sense, wow, I'm so excited. If I don't have to do this, I actually had no reference point. What would be the outcome of it? But there was a deeper sense of freedom that I could mm -hmm. really try it out. And yeah, and then I also, you know, when I started to travel on the road, I thought, wow, it's, it's really difficult actually, in terms of um, being understood. And and I sometimes was thinking of you, like, it must be a huge learning and teaching experience in that time, just in terms of living with people and all the emotions that comes up and also take full responsibility in the mind as well. But I do see that it, it's, it's hugely heart opening in the end. And yeah, bring it, brings it all back to, you know, you have to really choose to see it differently. You can't change anybody and anything in the world. Yeah. yeah the, even with community, it all comes back. The whole lesson is the present moment mm -hmm. that, you know, it all comes down to a realization that that community is in the mind, you know, we, we can talk about it in a form sense, which is the way it's experienced, but then you come into a realization that it's all, it's all your mind. Everything that happened was just to have you reach the present moment in, in awareness. There was no purpose in a linear way, it was all just to collapse time and to come back to being present. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see that in nature with when you see animals and birds and, you know, they, they, if you just look into their eyes, they seem very present. They, they don't seem like preoccupied. They're not, it doesn't look like they're thinking about the, the future or rehashing the past. You know, it's, they, they seem, even when some animals are very playful, uh, I just saw a video this morning on, I think it was on Facebook where I was on there and it was, it was a, a male lion and then a female lion who had come to the edge of, of, of a pond or a lake. 
maybe in Africa or something, and were just, they were thirsty. So first it showed the male lion with his big mane. He was there slurp, slurp, slurping away, you know, crouched down, slurping away, slurping away. And then um, up comes swimming to the lion a turtle. And the turtle is just so curious about, probably as if he's never seen a lion, and he swims right up, and the lion's trying to slurp, slurp, slurp away, and then the little turtle has got his little head and, uh, and his tongue, and he's up under the chin of the lion, and he's going under the whiskers of the lion, and the, the lion is, has a look like he doesn't want to disturb the turtle. <laughs> and uh, finally the lion, after he, the, the head of the turtle, he's poking, 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 finally the lion goes down like five feet to get away from the turtle to start <laughs> drinking again. <laughs> and then it showed the female lion, the same thing, the little turtle came up. And I, what a beautiful example of the present moment. There was no fear <laughs> in the turtle. <laughs> you know, the lion in linear time has a reputation of like the king, the the beast, the ruler, you know, over all these animals. And, and not to this turtle. The turtle was poking away like, huh, this is an interesting looking thing. I've never seen one of these, you know. It, it, so it was just kind of a cute clip to watch because it, it just seemed to be so free of past associations, you know. It was, it was joyful to see this little turtle poking away, like, hey, what's going on here, you know. So I think that's the way we can live. That's how we do live when we live in the present moment. It's a sense of wonder, you know, like that song, maybe le never lose our wonder. Mm. Wide-eyed, mystified. May we be like a child. May we never lose our wonder. May we stay forever in a state of wonderment. Mm. And uh, that's like, that's the miracle. Mm. To me, that's the miracle. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's so interesting. Once you get to a topic, it's so deep, and there's no no words that can really um, convey it anymore. It's the feeling I got. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We we picked one today. <laughs> <laughs> Let all things be exactly as they are. You can drop into that one. <laughs> It's the present moment. Yeah. That's where the joy is. That's where the wonder is. And and that's. That's it. That's the end. There is no how. There is no what. There is no journey. There is no change. Yeah, yeah. That's the simplest of all. Just the present moment. Mm. Because it is all. <laughs> that's why. That's why it's simple. Yeah. I know Jesus says that this course is simple. Truth is extremely simple, and yet. It only seems complicated in a twisted world when it is processed through the filters of the twisted world. And I truly um, can, can feel that, you know, if, if we're trying even to analyze everything <laughs> through this filter, it feels not straightforward. It feels, mm -hmm. oh, wow, it's this and that, you know, it's complicated, uh, and yet, what if it, it is to drop it all, even the filter to process anything? Yeah. And just be. Yeah, drop the filter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing need to be filtered. <laughs> Nothing needs to be filtered. That's what, what you're saying, Jesus, that you can accept... Um, you can accept yourself, your changelessness, and that's it. Mm -hmm. it it's not complicated. You yeah. do or you don't. Yeah. You say, yes, but, or you just say, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Can't be any simpler than accepting what is. And that's kind of like what Byron Katie calls love what is. It's the same thing. Just accept what is, because mm. that is the love. Mm -hmm. The love is present. The love is not past or future, and, and love is not something that can be manipulated or controlled or changed. 
you know. I was uh, listening to a song that um, I first heard from Stevie Wonder, uh, but uh, I think um, George Michael was doing it, and it was, it, it, there's a line in it that says, it's true that, don't you know that true love asks for nothing? Her acceptance is the way we pay. And life has given love a guarantee forever and an, another day. Like it's the sense of acceptance. That's what, that's what I always get from it. It's just acceptance, total acceptance. It's it's not generating or making something. It's mm -hmm. just an acceptance of what is and always has been so. Mm -hmm. And and then true love asks for nothing. That's beautiful too, because that's what unconditional love is. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make demands. It doesn't have requirements. It doesn't have needs. Mm -hmm. It's just this presence, this warm, warm presence. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too, as I recall my journey with miracles and everything, you know, it's not, I'm not like thinking of lectures or things that I've attended or whatever. I can feel the warmth of a hug back, you know, before the, the pandemic days, you know, that was our, our, our life was just traveling around and hugging people all mm -hmm. over the world and being hugged. Mm -hmm. And I can remember so clearly some of the feeling of the glow of some of those hugs, mm -hmm. how much love mm -hmm. there was in that embrace. It's mm -hmm. interesting, out of all the travels and talks and everything, that I remember the warm hugs, like this warm feeling of a long embrace. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's the kind of thing that, that stays, that stays in mind, you know, that, that feeling mm -hmm. is what it is. Mm. So now you know we. It looks how it looks right now, and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really. The appearances don't matter, but the feeling inside, inside mm -hmm. the heart, that's what matters. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love melts everything. That's <laughs> that must be the way Jesus comes at us. Is there's nothing to even heal because you know everything. So. Just let yourself be loved. Mm -hmm. Then you accept everything. <laughs> yeah. Give yourself to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Wow, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, David. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> I so enjoy these beautiful counters. Yeah, yeah. And thank you, everybody. I hope you feel just as I do. It, it, this, this whole hour is just like an experience for me just zoom by so fast <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i really hope that um that i could join with you again next week same time and thank you for being with us on this journey thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>